Neck throughs, guitars, they're like a guy that won't have a beer with you. I want to hear what's pushing the notes. Freddie King and B.B. King, Albert King, and let's not forget Burger King. I don't want to blow my knuckle out. Stainless steel is the work of the devil. These go to 11. From the East Amplification Tone Labs in Baltimore, Maryland, it's the Amps and Axes Show. With your hosts, Jeff the Godfather of Low Wattage Amps Bober and Mick Marcellino. Well, good day to you, Mr. Bober. Good day to you, Mr. Marcellino. Hey, man. Hey, man. We got to thank the fans, as we always do. Absolutely. But we also have to ask you something. Me or? Oh, the fans. Oh, the fans. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Anybody hearing us, man, we really need you. You guys are the guys that are going to get this thing to this next level. And we kind of need you guys to turn your friends on to this thing. Absolutely. And uh, if you guys do that, man, and the numbers start going up, we can do some really cool stuff. And we have lots of plans for the show. Um, but we just, you know, we, we, sub, we rely on you guys. You know, if, if, you, if you see the post on Facebook and you're, and you're on Facebook and you're friends with Amps and Axes, um, share it. Yeah, push that turd push, down push the road. It. That's it. <laughs> well, I wouldn't call it a turd, but, you know. I call everything a turd. I know, I know. You know, it's just the way I am. <laughs> <laughs> hey, and also, you know, our website, man, it's not a whole lot going on there, but we have some ideas. I think we're going to tie, well, we're definitely going to tie into the East Amplification uh, stuff. Okay. Because, uh, you know, we, it's like one big thing here. And, and so definitely go out and check out amps and access cast.com. Totally. And, and just so you know, yeah. I, I didn't tell you, but I, I, um, we're working on a, a new product and I was hoping it was going to be out by the holiday season. Uh, it's probably not going to happen, but you know, was on an hour and a half conference call last night working on the new design for the new boudoir pedal. Well, there you go. It's uh, it's gonna be great, man. Yeah, it's gonna yeah. be great. There, yeah, so get it's ready. It's cool. Yeah. And you know, when you go to the amps and access cast dot com, there's a little Amazon banner. Mm-hmm. You click, click on that, and guess what? You can buy all your Christmas stuff, all your Thanksgiving stuff, all the stuff that we really, really dread. Right. By the way. <laughs> and but it makes it easy it's it getting late in october so you could probably get a great deal on pumpkins yeah <laughs> <laughs> you know it's a halloween costume to tell you how crazy amazon is uh, there's this uh no spray because i have horrible allergies mm-hmm. and there's this no spray that i use that you can't buy in a store right it's it's you, organic. It's just it's you just, just have to buy it from a, a, a dealer at the side window of the car. Exactly. You know? Yeah. Well, it's either buy it on Amazon, right, or get it from a guy in a van. Right. <laughs> so uh, the van guy, not really trusting, because it says free candy on this side of it. Right. Right. <laughs> but uh, you know that's the kind of stuff. I mean, literally, Amazon's becoming this place where you can pretty much. I ex- I fully expect. Within the next five years, you're going to be buying your groceries off of Amazon. You know, and it's pretty crazy because a lot of the stuff I know that that we order here, or or, or my wife Petra might mm-hmm. order, you know, yeah, shows up within a couple of days. Even yeah, if you're not Prime, it, it shows up within a couple of days. It's kind of crazy, isn't it? You you have to pay for two day delivery, at UPS uh-huh. or FedEx to get things here in two days, where Amazon it's like yeah. Just, it's it's a sh- normal shipping charge, and it'll be here in two days. Well, you know, it depends how close you are to the hub. It's that smart. They they are very sophisticated. And getting with, more and more hubs. Yeah. Yeah. And as they build these hubs, this whole two-day Prime thing, the only reason that you want to get Prime, honestly, is not because really of the free two-day shipping. You get all the movies, and you get all the videos. Oh, really? Yeah, they have a whole... Is it two-day or is Prime overnight? I think it's just two it's day. Just two it's day? free two day shipping. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, granted, that's a, that's a cool thing because there are some things that you know. Hey, we got to get it from you know 
Nebraska. Yeah. Right. And so to get it from Nebraska, it's, it's going to take be five days. Yeah. yeah <laughs> right. You know. So, um, yeah, but they, I just see that company has this weird vision. And, and, and when I say weird is, is that it they literally want you to not go anywhere else. Mm-hmm. That's true. This is a place that only sold books in How the first five years of its existence. How funny is that? And I'm buying no spray. So, and you then, know. And then e-books. They'll sell you the Kindle, you know, and then you just you buy I, the books from them. I buy my like, Dunlop picks on there. I buy my Ernie Ball strings on there. I buy, I don't eat. Oh, I didn't show you the new East picks. I got new East picks. Oh, uh, we'll, we'll have to check these out. Yeah, I haven't shown them to you yet, so. Um, one thing that we want to do is I want to apologize. Uh, Mr. Wheeler from last week. He uh, wants to. He wants to get those pictures of that three thirty five with all the Bernie Rico stuff uh, done on it. Um, his camera, uh, his phone died, lost everything. Oh no! Yeah, so he said he's in the process of getting a new phone, and once he does, then he'll he'll try to uh, get us some photos, and I will post those whenever he gets them over to us. I, you know, everybody knows. Mostly, everybody knows how bad that sucks when that yeah, happens. Yeah, yeah, and hopefully, he was backing it up to the iCloud. Or I, something. I was. I'm. I'm hoping so. Uh, I'm or, on my. I'm on my first iPhone. Mm-hmm. Everything else was Android, and I yeah. never backed up to anything. It's kind of a risky thing when yeah. you're walking around with this device that can. You know, if you drop it, it's broke. Well, and, yeah, you know, <laughs> and then. You, then you know, a, a good part of your life is now in there. It's yeah. crazy. Yeah, That's it's kind of weird that we all rely on these things. So anyway, anyway, definitely go to the website. We we want you to go there. Everything's there. You got archives of uh, all the um, guy, the Mister. Uh, from Jason up Zanitas, north, that's right. The quick click boy, <laughs> yeah, and that's right. I'll, no, I can't. Well, well, we have to because you got to remember. It's almost it's like I got to rewind it. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, the archives are there. Every single episode of this show is there. You cannot get every episode on iTunes. They no. hold us to a hundred. A hundred, yeah. And we have a hundred and fifty episodes, man. You so, know when I want to go look up something, I go to the website. Yeah, now I totally do. Here's the other thing, and I apologize. I, it's I have a day job, but I'm I'm linking. If you go, if you scroll down past Jason and the mm-hmm. episode and everything, you're going to see all of the all of the artists, everybody, There's every whole interview, list whole list there in alphabetical order. Yes. I'm going through, I'm hot linking them. So it, because when you go into the archive page and this is just the way blogs work, I gave it as many entries as I could, yeah, I know. um, that the website will allow us. Uh, but you got to keep going older and old and, yeah. and it's just so much easier if you go, wow, they interviewed Paul Gilbert. There's Click. an alphabetical list. <laughs> Click, and right. then boom, you're in the next, yeah, so you're the, in that the, page. So yeah, yeah, more and more hot links are showing up on that. So yeah. I've been working, yeah. you know, I've been doing it and, um, uh, so, yeah, definitely uh, check all that out because mm-hmm. we really want you to go there and get all your information and everything else. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. It's so funny because um, I'm reading the Bruce's new book, you know, Born to Run. And that's a guy, right? And when the beginning of his career, like. It, it's it, I, I'm learning a lot more than I knew. It's really, really great. It's a great book. Yeah. Uh, I mean, there were absolutely a couple times where Mick, I mean, he had. Zero, literally zero. Yeah. You know, I, I heard mean, those first years were horrible, really lean, but I mean, literally zero. There's, there's a story in there where he was, uh, he was asked to come into, I think Columbia records in New York, who was bringing him in John Hyatt, maybe, or somebody was bringing him in because uh, on the recommendation of somebody else. Uh huh. And he, uh, he was going in with a borrowed crappy guitar he didn't even have a guitar, and he he said he could get there. He I think he borrowed his parents' car or his friend's car or something like that. Um, counted out literally counted out the change from the piggy bank. Figured out he had enough money to put gas in the car and to to pay the dollar toll. Tolls, yeah. At, at that time, it was a dollar toll to get into New York. Now it's like fifteen bucks to get into the Hollander uh, Lincoln yeah, Tunnel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it was a dollar to get in. Wow. And literally change, and he's he's pulling up. He's pulling up to the toll booth, and there's this sign that you don't want to see. Uh, no pennies. We do Good not accept Good God. Pen. He had 100 pennies. And he couldn't do it. To get in. And she said, I can't accept these. And the toll taker said, I can't accept these. He said, it's all I have. I have nothing else. Well, you're going to have to wait till I count them all. And he said, you know, a little bit slow on the count, but she's counting oh, everything out. And he man. knew there was 100 pennies there. 
And she goes, I can't take this one. It's Canadian. Good God. (laughs) He said, all right, this is a car. Everywhere in a car has some change laying somewhere (laughs) on the floor under the seats. He actually looked all around the car. There's got to be cars piling up. He said the, 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 it was a symphony of horns at that point. Oh my God. He just like turned it over into, this is like a glorious symphony of horns. (laughs) Finds the penny. (laughs) Gives it to her. She says, okay, don't ever do that again. (laughs) Yeah. Right. But you know, that's, he was a guy that was going to make it. Oh yeah. He knew at that point he had the goods and he, you know, he, um, he blew up a couple of ensembles mm-hmm. before that point. Yeah, I mean, if this you guy's think got about... a, this guy's got a problem. This guy's got this, and this yeah. you know, isn't working. This one doesn't want to do. blow it up because it's not it's, in the long run. It's not going to work. Exactly. If you've got that 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 insight, you know, if you can see like the kind of the future, you'll be able to tell kind of quickly where somebody's head is. Mm-hmm. And if they're not there, I don't care how good they are; they're not worth anything to you i mean you know if you're in it to be a weekend band you know and there's nothing wrong with that and that's great you know find some great players and if they all have the time to do it fantastic but if you're if you're just starting and you're going to go out to try to quote unquote make it you can't have anybody pulling you down right it's it's an all or nothing thing and everybody's got to be in all or nothing you know it's the way it used to be it's pretty funny when you start seeing that you Mm -hmm. know what i mean you 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 kind of look at at people and and they're they're uh their attitudes change very quickly when they're presented with certain uh, elements. Sure. You know, because some guys are like, well, man, I was just doing this for fun. And it's like, we never, those words never came out of anybody's head. But it's like, as soon as the heat gets turned up a little bit, then all of a sudden they're like, whoa, what you know, you mean I and have it, to sacrifice. Yeah. And it's like, well, okay, no problem. But now you're gone. Ramen. <laughs> I hate ramen. <laughs> <laughs> Other than eat peanut butter and jelly, dude. Yeah. That's all you're going to have. And and look, there's for every story that there's a success, there's 10 that never. And these guys could be the best of uh, best of brothers. I, I don't I don't think 10 really captures I, that. That, that is true. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But you know what I mean? It's it's just that that's the thing. Sure. Sure. And look, you know, there's probably million dollar bands out there that we'll never hear of mm-hmm. just because wrong place wrong time wrong whatever right you know right. it's a it's a crap shoot that's uh, for sure it, yeah well and today god only knows what today's world right <laughs> for a band that's trying to make it i mean let's just take blackberry smoke right okay these guys are doing it and they're doing it right and let me tell you They've been on the country stations with one song, I think, Whippoorwill, off of their second album, or I don't think it's on the third. They're just, they just released their fifth album. Uh, they had a live album in there. Okay. And, uh, you know, I see their posts, and they're only getting, you know, a couple hundred hits here and there, and I'm like, man. It, it is different nowadays. Uh, it, you know... <clears throat> More than likely, you will put your own time and dinero into recording something yeah. and, and burning CDs. Uh, and you'll take those CDs uh, and you'll get them, you know, you'll get them produced and you'll get some T-shirts and then you'll tour. And you'll make more money nowadays touring and selling merch than you would in, in, some court of, in some sort <laughs> of... Um, recording quote-unquote contract yeah with with some larger company oh it's, yeah that doesn't seem to really be there and happen monetarily for people until they hit a certain level of success and that's a very big level of success mm-hmm. other than that a lot of these guys are going out there and they're and they're touring they're they're constantly touring yep. and those are the guys if you can stomach that those are the guys that are making the money from playing music yeah it's no longer a big record contract it's you know you do the record um and yeah, you sell exactly. it at your shows yeah and if you if you if you follow those guys in blackberry they live where they've always lived mm-hmm. very modest mm-hmm. they know how to do it i mean they really they i think they know how to keep themselves grounded yeah there's no delusion there yeah and no. they uh you know they're playing some good sized places 
And, you know, all the artists, uh, the, uh, Greg Allman's on the new album. Oh, cool. And cool. it's a great song. And, you know, it's, it's you nice know. to have some, some cool outside yeah. talent. That's on, one of on those Southern list. rock bands which we're kind of lacking these days. That, yeah. That, you know, yeah. That no, I like those dudes. New, yeah. yeah. Well, we had Charlie and we had Paul. Mm-hmm. And they're, they're, they're doing it. I like Absolutely. that. Yeah. Speaking of cool talent on a release. You know what? Our guest today. I've been waiting this f- for this for a while now. So this is kind of cool. Cool. Not kind of uh, cool. It's cool. What it the hell cool. am I saying? It's, it's cool. <laughs> it's very cool. He, um, he uh, manages to find a way to get these excellent players on his releases mm-hmm. um, because he himself is an excellent player. Uh, and he, he manages to do this without ever having them in the same room. And I'm always amazed at that. You know, yeah. it's, it's a, it, the way he does it is, is crazy cool. You know? Oh yeah. 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 I, I still can't get it. <laughs> so we'll, uh, we'll take a quick break. Yeah. And we'll be back with our guest of the week is he was on years ago, right? Back in the oh, early. Yeah. You're going to make me. Yeah. No, lo- I need quite a while ago, quite a while ago, back in the early days. <laughs> yes. Um, but but, he, but strangely we, see enough, him, we see him every week. That's what? right. We see him every week doing the quick lick. So we're going to take a break. Be right back uh, with the uh, reappearance of Mr. Jason Sedidas. <laughs> This is Tom Wheeler. I'm the former editor-in-chief of Guitar Player Magazine. I'm the author of several uh, guitar books, currently a professor at the journalism school at the University of Oregon. And this is Amps and Axis. All right, and we are back as promised because we always keep our promises with our guest of the week, the one and only Mr. Jason Sedatus. Jason, how are you? I'm doing very well, thanks. Excellent, excellent. Good to hear you again. Good to hear your voice. We always see you're playing yeah. Rarely hear your voice. <laughs> yes, it's been a while. Actually, how long has it been? I don't even... Geez, oh, everybody's going to ask show, me this now. What show are you guys on now? <laughs> uh, well, we're, we just did number 150. You're number 151. Like the Bacardi. Oh, and uh, let's see here. I will uh, go no. out. And you just uh, chat amongst yourselves now, now as Mick I is, find this out. Mick is going to go to our website <laughs> to find out when uh, you're I on. See. Because <laughs> I asked him the same thing. I said, it's been a long time yeah. now. I think it's oh, no, no, yeah, like, I, I, a couple of years or has uh, it been two years yet? Or you know, I guess it has I been. Bet, I bet. Well, we're, we're, we're rapidly approaching three. Yes. And oh, man. Crazy. Yeah, this was, this was really in the early okay. stages. There he is. I'm thinking like 20 something or 16. April, 16. April 16th, 2014. It was the sixteenth episode. Wow! <laughs> wow! So we're we're uh, just, we're past we're two and a half years. Yeah! Wow! wow. Hey, welcome Great. back! <laughs> well, thank you very much. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Again. It's okay, and, and um, yes, there's there's at least one question that we need cleared up because <laughs> we do I this. Think all I think I know what it is, but I'll let you finish. <laughs> yeah, I don't need to, I don't even need to finish. Just say the name. Okay. Well, see, there's there's got to be an explanation to it, though, because there could be multiple pronunciations to this. And I always laugh when you guys are talking about this, because up in Canada here, you know, the company is based out of Quebec, right? Mm-hmm. So if you're talking to somebody who predominantly speaks French, they may give a, a very different pronunciation since it's the owner and founder's last name. So um, I would pronounce it Godin. Okay. And I believe I, I am. I have absolutely no French skills whatsoever. But I believe in French, it would be more like Godin. Godin, yeah. Godin, okay. without the uh, din at the end, you know. But mm-hmm. I think I, I, everybody that I talk to, you know, I'll hear them refer to it as Godin. Well, well, that's what we're going to go with. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, and I think everybody's will be fine with that. <laughs> There's a new slogan: "Going with Godin." Yeah. <laughs> I like it. I like it. I'm just going to edit that. You know what Jason said, mm-hmm. and then every time we want to say the name, I'll just we'll punch just put, it in. Yeah, right. A yeah. Hot button. A hot right. Button. Oh, hot I don't need to hear myself Good. saying that that often. <laughs> oh man, there, um, some nice guitars you have there in the arsenal now, sir. Yes, it's uh, it was a growing arsenal for a while. I think I am at the point where I've stopped adding to it, at least for now. But you know how that goes. That can that's always open to uh, <laughs> to change, as it is for all of us, I imagine. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. You know, some nice ones, man. And and to to go a little bit further with these guys, it's mm. an insane made instrument for the money. Oh yeah. Oh, it's absolutely crazy. How I don't even know how 
how they do it. I, I've talked to Fred, uh, which is uh, one of the reps at uh, at Golden, and uh, I actually said that to him once. How do you guys do this? Like, how are you putting a guitar on the shelf for you know under a thousand bucks in some cases? Yeah. And the thing is competing with guitars that are like three times that. You know, it's uh, they're absolutely amazing instruments. Yeah. Yeah. They and and just all the way from their you know nylon string with the you know their own preamps and mm-hmm. everything and, right. and just amazing sounding and that's, that's all the way yeah, to their that's, electric that's line. one of the first guitars i'd ever seen was was their nylon yeah. string and they had even like a midi uh bass thing right am, am i not am i yeah, right with they've that? got yeah. they've got a bunch of models with um like i have one of the electrics i have has you know two seymour duncan humbuckers but it's also got the piezo uh, bridge saddle so you can flip it into acoustic mode and it's got the Roland guitar synth uh, ready <laughs> hook up on it as well so it's basically you can do everything with that one instrument you know yeah. wow. under a thousand bucks <laughs> right right put the entire rest of the band out of business yeah. and you know really. exactly yeah. <laughs> and they even run the uh well the, he you know you said the Seymour Duncans uh they had they had like a a Les Paul type kind of single cut yeah single cut Mm -hmm. i guess we do we have to talk in the weird cryptic thing or can i say les paul you can say les paul but it's uh (laughs) but they had anything it's not a les paul is i guess theoretically referred to it's a single cut yeah they had the uh p rails in there which gives you like you know three three different tones for one pickup oh yeah yeah yeah. so it's a p90 it's a single coil and then it's a humbucker Humbucker, right and you can switch all that Mm -hmm. so imagine your guitar with three positions just in the in in, in the position pickup. in one pickup, pick and then yeah. you got two of them. It's like endless, you know. That's and cool. yeah, nobody yeah, else yeah, was really. You're awesome. talking about the uh, it's their Summit Classic. It's called. Yeah. And uh, I actually have they come in, they comes in three configurations, and they all come with Duncan's. Actually, yes. um, I can't remember in the humbucker model. I can't remember exactly which Duncan's it is. I think it it's might a be like 59? a JB and a fifty nine or something yeah, like that. Yeah. Yep, and then they have just a straight P90 model, which is the vintage P90 uh, Duncan's, yep. and then they have the P rail one. So I have the one with the HB and the one with the P90s, but I don't have the P rails one. And actually, that's a really, really sweet idea because of the single coil mix and just being able to get so many tones at your fingertips. With see what you did to him, Mick. You made yeah. him want another guitar. Sorry about Thanks that. Thanks a lot, man. <laughs> Great. You're gonna have to edit out my first comment at the beginning, like I was saying that I was done. I with don't need anything it. else. Now I do. It's been five minutes. You already changed this mic. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Too funny. Well, you know uh, the the Strat model. And I have to refer, I don't have the names, I apologize. But the one that you use in, in the videos, a lot of the videos that you've been doing lately, mm-hmm. um, that has that button. It's active, right? And when you hit yeah. that thing, that thing jumps. I mean, it. It. I've heard it. Mm. Um, yeah, it's really interesting. It's, uh, it's on a few of the models. Actually, I'm just looking. Now. Actually, believe it or not, their Summit, the uh, LP style single cutaway, They've incorporated into that. So even on wow. the uh, on the one with the P rails, I believe they have that, and on the humbucker version. So just looking here, I have one, two, three, four of them. The two Strat styles that I have, and the two single cuts that I have, all have that. And it's a really neat little system that it gives you just so many more tonal possibilities. Your finger is literally just hitting the button with your pinky, and you've got this you know crazy boost going. It's not yeah. even a boost. I don't know. It, it gives you a boost, but it, it kind of reshapes the frequencies a bit, so you, you end up doubling your pickup configuration possibilities. Yeah, if you go oh, on their that's website, cool. That's cool. you can um, they they do it right on the website with a video, and obviously they're running uh, through recording software. Okay, and you can hear it, mm-hmm. and I mean it takes like that Strat sound and just makes it just a little bit. It's it's like wow, that thing got big, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. but it's not overbearing kind of kind of like a p90 i guess maybe because that's you know that's yeah, that's, a, that's yeah. a going yeah. from like that's, a regular that's a hotter single. bigger strat yeah sound yeah. exactly that's cool yeah it might be a good way to they call it what do they call it, the high definition revoice or the hdr <laughs> and uh it's and the really neat thing about it and and one thing that i was a little standoffish about in, in the beginning when i when i read about that was 
that I thought, oh boy, active pickup, what happens? You're in the middle of something playing and the battery starts dying. And well, what they've done is even if you take the battery out and just turn it off, it still runs perfectly in passive mode. So the, the battery doesn't even affect that. Is that cool? So there is That's a battery right. in there, but they've set it up so that, you know, your battery starts going, well, you just click it off and, and off you go. It's as you know, good as not having it in there. But um, yeah, it's pretty interesting. I, I find with, with, I'll have it, depending on what I'm doing, I turn it off if I want something a little more, uh, uh, I don't know, maybe just more organic sounding, it's off. And then mm-hmm. when I want just a little more punch, I'll pop it in. So it's okay. It's just really nice to have it. It really opens up a lot of possibilities, especially in recording and, you know, you get so many more textures uh, out of one guitar. Cool. Yeah, man. Very nice. <laughs> did you uh, Did you wind up using a plethora of guitars on your on your new release or did you kind of settle into one that you really liked and that's the meat and potatoes of most everything i actually used a whole pile and it was really nice to have uh, <laughs> all those um possibilities at uh, at my disposal because a lot of times just double tracking rhythms and whatnot you know i'd grab maybe the single cut for one and maybe you know double up uh, and pan them left and right and do the p90s on the other side or you know just grabbing the semi hollow body that i have or you know so i just really layered a ton of sounds and i also have their um their two uh multi-axe which i have the nylon string and the steel string now, these things are absolutely amazing because they've built into it have you heard of this uh well it's the fishman um Oh my goodness! Now it's escaping me what the what the technology is called. But basically, what it is is you can you can buy these these um, basically external boxes that you can plug a piezo pickup equipped acoustic into, and it makes it sound like it was recorded with studio mics. So it's like huh. mic modeling basically. And I was again, you know, it's kind of like I wonder how that actually works. Well, what they've done is they've worked into and built right into the guitars. Uh, this technology so you can you can go oh full piezo or you can blend it straight through to the mic modeling and there's four different models i, I the one is a, a chef's uh, i can't even remember the models now i'd have to look it up it's on their website but when you go studio wise and plug in direct and put it full on the mic mm-hmm. modeling i i closed my eyes and i thought i was in a studio with a you know a neumann mic in front of an acoustic guitar it wow. sounded that good actually on my new album every single acoustic guitar tone on there is recorded direct straight through that uh, either the nylon string or the steel string so there's no mic to acoustic guitars it's all di'd but it mm. sounds totally wow. mic'd i cool. saw That's andy cool. mckee play live mm-hmm. and he had one of those boxes so you know, you think, oh, this guy's just an acoustic guy. It's going to be one direct feed, right? Mm-hmm. So he yeah. had, he had, you know, his $25,000 acoustic that was built by <laughs> some guy in a cave somewhere. And um, they, they had, so he had like the real sophisticated pickup system, one that rides on the bridge, the condenser that's inside the mm-hmm. guitar. He ran that out. That went to, uh, you could see it went to a splitter. Then it went to that Fishman box. So there was probably five channels of sound okay. that right. he was pulling off of that. And it just sounded, uh, I never heard anything like that. Wow. Yeah. You know, live. Mm-hmm. It was just yeah. crazy. Uh, I'm totally blown away by it because that, that was always the tough part. In fact, on previous albums, places where I wanted to put acoustic, because I'm always based just out of my home studio, you know, recording an acoustic guitar um with a you know large diaphragm super sensitive large diaphragm condenser mic in front of you you know while people are walking through the house and a you know two or three year old at the time is (laughs) running around screaming it's just like an impossibility right even even something like you know computer fan noise or or the furnace kicking on and off or you know whatever it is Mm -hmm. it makes it so difficult to get a a really nice recording and on this uh, album having those two at my disposal i really took advantage of i layered a lot of acoustic stuff and it was just so easy it could be two in the morning and you're just sitting there you know noodling on a nylon string and getting this gorge over headphones right not even disturbing anybody wow. and uh that's awesome and uh or middle of the day it doesn't matter who's you know who's around or what noise is going on and it just sounds absolutely killer so those are amazing those those two guitars i i used a lot and then yeah i mean just uh, you know, I, I actually, even the, I, on this album, all but two cuts I played bass on as well. 
Um, I have one of their five string uh, shifter basses, which is f- fabulous. Nice. Uh, I mean, it's, you know, like not much of a bass player, but um, <laughs> it, it was it was great. So I actually ended up just deciding to to go all out and do all most of the bass tracks myself this time too, which was. Uh, it seemed like a good idea before I started, and then halfway through, I realized that uh, maybe it wasn't such a good idea. But I got through it one way or the other. <laughs> very nice, very nice. Still, uh, uh, Marco on drums on this one. Marco did every track on this one. Yep, yeah. he, wow. uh, he did them all, and he did a uh, spectacular job as uh, as usual. Uh, he always uh, always amazes me because uh, it's kind of funny because I did I what how many I don't even know how many songs are on this album. Eight? Nine, nine, ten. I don't know. Anyways, nine or ten. I'd have to take a look. Um, but it, it was really funny because I did two tracks really early on, and uh, I mean the thing about working with with Marco is that he's eternally touring, right? So uh, trying to nail him down when he's actually available to be able to to do a track is is the trick, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So um, I had him do two tracks, and the funniest story was. Um, he uh, he says, yeah, no problem. I'll be home next week and I'll get these done for you and blah, blah, blah. So I get an email one day and he's like, uh, uh, there's 10 tunes on the album, by the way. I just checked. <laughs> um, so he, uh, I, I had sent him these two and I get, you know, and my inbox goes off one day and it's Mark when he says, hey, give this a listen. What do you think? And these were probably two of the more complex tunes as far as time signature changes and uh, arrangement goes. And uh, so I listened to the first track, an absolutely stellar job he did. It was amazing, incredible. And uh, he, he emails me back. I email him back, and I said, yeah, great. Oh, it's awesome. Thank you so much. And he, he emails me back and says, I'm probably not going to be able to get to the other one until tomorrow. Uh, and, yeah, I was like, yeah, no worries, right? That's fine, whatever, no rush. And uh, so he emails me about a minute later again, and he says, uh, actually, you know what? I decided I might as well just get it done. Uh, <laughs> so I said, oh, cool, but, you know, no pressure. And literally 18 minutes later, oh my God, my <laughs> inbox goes off again. And he says, uh, let me know what you think of this. And I was like, it's amazing, right? <laughs> oh it's incredible. God. So I emailed him back and I said, okay, you got to let me know something. Like, did you, you know, listen to this track like, before doing it? Right, or, like a hundred times. And, <laughs> right. Yeah. And he literally says, no, he says, when I emailed you and said that I couldn't do it till tomorrow, I just decided to do it so i I went listened to it once and this is like a four and a half minute tune listened to it once tracked it did a quick rough mix and emailed it to me holy crap jesus and i just kind of went you're you're an animal man it's (laughs) and and (laughs) as everybody should know but at at this point uh this ain't uh you know four four stuff no (laughs) No. no, and that's the funny thing is these, like I said, these two tunes were probably, you know, a couple of the more complex ones, but I don't think the word complex is in his vocabulary. Like he just no, I listens, just, yeah. whatever it is, he just eats it for breakfast and <laughs> that's the end of it. <laughs> that's just, that is, that's mind boggling. Yeah. It really is. Well, yeah. you know, you got to figure he's out there uh, with Guthrie mm-hmm. and yeah. uh, there's not a second that you get to relax when you're doing that gig no but yeah, and i understand that you may rehearse those songs a few times and then as you're out touring they get better and better he's not human no 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 uh, now no, I, really I assume something special i assume you sent him a chart oh absolutely not no huh? no, no 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 he uh he no he just no. what he hears things differently. I think I, I don't. I don't know how else to put it. I mean, he just instantly hears hears it, knows what it is, and has a million different things he can do with that. You, you know, at somebody, the drop of a hat. So <laughs> I'm blown away. How can anybody do that? I mean, <laughs> your stuff is so it's crazy. It's, it's, it's all over the it's place. Complex. Yeah. Yeah. How do you? Yeah. And, <laughs> well, you know what's really funny is when I started working with Marco. Back, I think the first the first album I did with him was called Weave, and it was back. That was the one I did with. Uh, there was a bunch of great players on it: Tony Levin, Kenny Aronoff, Greg Bissonette, Matt Bissonette. Oh my God. Uh, wow. um, Chad Wackerman was on that one. So uh, I, I had a bunch of guys on that, and I had Marco do I think three three tunes on that album. And I I just remember how amazed I was at that point with how what he did with the tunes. 
And it, it was kind of neat because after that, I, I started writing even more complex, just simply, not because, just for the sake of complexity, but you when I had the talent I to take care of it, needed that complexity. I wasn't afraid to do it mm-hmm. like I was maybe earlier on because you kind of go, well, yeah, I can write this, but you know, who, who in the heck am I going to get to play it, right? So I think I started writing around the fact that, you know, this guy can take it and just you know slay it and, and send it you know it, it'd be perfect so uh, you got the email of the world's greatest drummer <laughs> totally <laughs> so yeah, exactly yeah no big deal and uh, <laughs> I, yeah and i'm pretty honored to have him uh, you know so open to to doing the stuff and mm. uh it's it's always always a blast to have him on the albums and he's a great guy too i mean he's you know him he's just one of the one of the nicest easygoing guys i've had i had uh, quite a few chances to to uh have uh, have a couple of drinks with them after shows and whatnot whenever he's coming through canada or uh, whenever we're traveling through the states and we happened to last summer was kind of neat actually they uh, on our way driving back up uh, through the states from florida they uh, the aristocrats were playing in atlanta georgia and oh, we just hmm. happened to be going through there within that same day uh, so i emailed them up and uh, we ended up going to the show and it was just fabulous fabulous show uh but we got to hang with uh with marco and guthrie after the show for a bit which was uh, which was a pretty interesting uh pretty interesting hang and uh there's a couple interesting stories out of that but <laughs> well you know it it's it's weird because you know i i discovered guthrie through the cornford uh demonstrations okay Corford oh, Amps. Great, yeah, yeah. Corford, Corford, Cornford yeah. Amps, yes. And um, I was like, who is this person? You know, like he was, I guess the internet thing had just started and it was really starting, you know, to get around. Mm-hmm. And then I see like some NAM footage and I'm like, it, it almost looks like he's like, you know, like attacking the guitar and just doing the craziest things that you've ever seen. And it's like, well... Okay, so uh, this guy listens to one of your crazy tracks for like one time, and then comes up with it. They're kind of like meant to be together. Oh, absolutely. You know? that, I mean, and, and you know <laughs> what? Even Brian Beller on bass too. Brian is an absolute monster. They he uh, he played on one track on one of my albums. He's, he's an absolute monster. I mean, he, it's 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 probably one of the greatest trios that's ever existed. I mean, it, <laughs> you know, it's it's just just three amazing three of the best musicians in the world. Guthrie's just scary beyond belief, but actually there's a really good story <laughs> behind that. So we go, we go uh, to the show in Atlanta and uh, afterwards uh, I was hanging out backstage with, with Marco and I, I met Guthrie before at, at NAM uh, back in, I don't know, maybe 2008 or 2009. And I mean, really briefly met him at the Cornford booth. Right. And he, he would have no reason to, to know who I was or care who I was, but um I chatted with him for a couple minutes. Anyways, the funny thing is, is Marco introduces me backstage. He says, oh, this is, this is my friend Jason. And, and Marco goes, oh, yeah, we met uh, at NAM back in 2008. Wow. And I went, well, like, I think he's just, you know, probably the <laughs> type of guy who has this brain that, that doesn't forget anything. You know, he's just, uh, it was amazing. Anyway, so we go, we go across to this little bar after uh, to have a couple whiskeys and, and relax. So we're sitting outside on the, the front patio. And there's a gentleman outside uh, just busking and playing this whole beat up acoustic guitar. And uh, he had this funny attitude to him. Anyways, the, the, he starts, he turns to this young couple, this guy and girl, obviously just out on a date for the night. And uh, he says, ask the kid if he plays guitar. And the kid says, oh, I play a little bit. So he says, well, here, take it and, you know, show me something. And, and so he proceeds to kind of start telling the kid how to play and giving him this, this, somewhat of a makeshift guitar lesson at like two thirty in the morning on the streets of Atlanta. Right. <laughs> and so meanwhile, sitting right next to him is Guthrie having a cigarette and a, and a beer and Marco and I stand in next and we're all just chatting. So, so this young couple gets up and leaves. Well, this busker decides he's going to, and I'm thinking he's he looked like he was in his late fifties, maybe early sixties. And he turns to Guthrie and decides not knowing who this is, mm-hmm. that he's going to make Guthrie his next student, Victim. guitar student. <laughs> yeah. 
so he turns to Guthrie and Marco and I just kind of step back and go, oh, this is going to be good, right? And he gives Guthrie the guitar and he says, well, show me, uh, show me what you can do on this. So Guthrie slowly just starts playing some chords, really not showing his hand at all, right? So the guy starts saying, well, that's not bad. But then he starts giving him all this advice about what he can do to improve his playing. Oh, my God. This is hilarious. <laughs> well, well, this, I, I wish to, to, to this day I had videotaped this, right? This would have been a viral video. Oh, my that, gosh. Sure. Know, it would have been the funniest thing. But anyway, so Guthrie slowly just starts picking it up. Next thing, he's flying through these amazing <laughs> jazz changes. And then he's ripping the frets off this thing. And this is this, this horrible acoustic guitar with, you know, strings that are way too high and whatnot. And, just, and then so he, he, he looks, he goes, the guy's face starts to change. And he's going, oh, wait a minute. I don't know. <laughs> so then he turns to Marco and he's like, well, what do you play? And he says, uh, he says well, I'm a drummer. And he says, oh, anybody can play drums. Oh, my. <laughs> oh dear God. <laughs> uh, and then he turns to me and he's like, well, what do you play? I play a little bit of guitar. So then he hands me the guitar. So I start playing stuff. And then he just realizes he just got played here. And yeah. Then, uh, <laughs> In a big way. Yeah. Really? It was, anyways, you have to kind of be there to really appreciate it. I oh, think that, that is it was, awesome. Uh, it was a rather humorous uh, situation. <laughs> you guys go, how did I wind up in the middle of all this greatness? <laughs> Yeah, you know, I guess the moral like, is just never, you never know who you're talking to. Exactly. Never the hell anybody, right? Just because the guy looks like he needs serious conditioner and a shave right. does not mean he can't play the guitar. I thought Marco was going to pick up a couple of forks and some plates and <laughs> yeah. glasses and just like yeah. lay into it. <laughs> hey, wait, was the, con- the serious conditioner comment, was that towards me? Or- no, no. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> I have no need for conditioner. No. <laughs> we can tell you don't use any. <laughs> it's like a, it's almost like a before and after picture when him and Guthrie are hanging out. Yeah, totally. Oh god, <laughs> that's right. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> that's hilarious. Man. So you play a little guitar? A little bit. A little bit. Oh, that was it was that was hilarious. We had a good laugh about that after. <laughs> that's pretty funny. That is that's uh, hilarious. Wow. You know, I I, I got to go back for a second. I have I had a question. Yeah. So so. Marco calls you up, you know, he's on tour, he calls you up, goes, hey, you know, here, check out these two, and I can't do the other one. Then he calls you up, you know, and says, no, I just decided to do it, you know, here, take a listen. He's on tour. How does he cut this? How does he cut these tracks? Oh, no, sorry. So he was at home by the time he's cutting it, right? So, oh. yeah. So basically oh. what I was saying is he's usually out on tour, you know, so, so so much of the year. But once he got home, you know, he's home for maybe a week and it's like, oh, you know, okay. he cuts the tunes, okay. right? So <laughs> I thought that's one hell of a ho- hell hotel room. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right, right. <laughs> no, and the, the funny thing is, Mark will send me some of his new stuff uh, before he releases it just to get – opinions on mixes and whatnot which is pretty cool i get to hear some of his stuff before uh-huh. uh, the, the the masses do on his solo albums and uh the, the way he works is hilarious i mean he he's constantly in hotel rooms he carries a guitar with him and mark is a fabulous guitar player like he's he's oh, really really of underrated he guitar is. player <laughs> and uh but he'll ha- he'll work with just one of these little uh, universal audio apollo interfaces in his hotel room and write uh write his tunes in there and just do everything in his hotel rooms, cuts vocals. So he does so much on the road. And I guess what he does is he waits till he gets some time off. He goes home, he tracks his drums to it. And so he's, uh, he has Unreal. so many uh, solo albums. that it's ridiculous. And wow. I, I didn't realize that. <laughs> I, that. That now I just want to go home and burn it. Right. Yeah. With your, guitar? <laughs> your guitar. Yeah. 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 It's yeah. like, why? <laughs> I tell you, if you're yeah, that no, serious he's, about he's, it, he's, he actually, I don't know if you've heard the album that uh, he did with, uh, well, he's done two albums with Tony Levin and Jordan Rudess from Dream Theater. Wow. Oh, well, there you go. Yeah, it's on uh, Lazy Bone Records, actually, and they've done two of them, and Marco actually ends up playing guitar on it. So he, uh, yeah, it's, they're fabulous albums, oh really, really God. cool albums. <laughs> I, 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 wow. <laughs> uh, yeah, what do you do? I mean, uh, that's insane. Yeah, he's, he's, he probably plays 12 or 15 other instruments uh, equally you know, as well yeah. you know he just so I'm sure he, does, he, just, yeah. he just hasn't cut an album with flugelhorn on it yet, you know? <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey wait that was my next idea there you go. <laughs> so are you still doing it all single click with the mouse when you chart all this stuff out still uh, uh, you mean the drumming stuff yeah pretty, well oh yes and no i mean I, what, what i'll do now a lot of times is I mean, it depends on what I, what I was writing. Some of the stuff I was writing, there just weren't any existing kind of drum loops that 
were even in the ballpark of what I was going for. So in those cases, yeah, I'll just kind of like paint out the whole thing, right? Uh, with, uh, you know, this hi-hat pattern, this kick and snare pattern. Sometimes though, I'll just grab like existing loops from a loop library. And the thing is with MIDI, I mean, once it's in there, yeah. you can even take a, a, a four, four pattern and, and easily make it a, you know, five, four patterns by adding an extra, you know, beat snare hit or whatever to it. So, so I'll start sometimes with a pre-existing uh, drum loop that is actually played by a drummer to get that feel a bit. Gotcha. Um, and then just edit around, move the, move the notes around. So sometimes that's a little bit of a faster way to work. Now, if, you... if I can find something that's generally in the ballpark feel wise, you mm-hmm. know, but in the end, like I said, I don't, I know I'm never going to release it with that anyways. So yeah. I don't really get too bent out of shape on whether the, you know, the dynamics of the drum machine part is right or anything. You know what I mean? It's more right. just to sure. get the idea across to, to Marco or whoever's, you know, going to play it. That, now, now yeah, are, you, are you using, um, just Cubase to do that or with their plugins or are you using like a superior drummer or one of those? Yeah, I, well, I mean, I, I'm doing everything in Cubase for sure. I got mm-hmm. uh, the new Cubase 8.5, which is awesome. Amazing. So many cool features in that. Um, but I use uh, BFD. Oh, BFD, BFD is, is a great company. Yeah. Oh, F- F- expansion, a eh? fabulous product. So a really, yeah. really good. So, Cause I mean, that's the one thing. I mean, the one thing that I want is a decent drum sound from the drum machine, because I mean, it is really, it can be a very inspiring thing or it can just kind of like, you know, suck the inspiration out of you when you're <laughs> yeah. know, writing to something that sounds really cheesy. Right? Well, it's so, definitely I mean, not a they, DR 808 or anything. Sound incredible. <laughs> or 505. What was that? The Dr. Rhythm? You know, the, oh, yeah, the old yeah, drum right. machines, yeah. the 8080 and stuff like right, that. Right, right, right. Um, so BFD is one of those companies that, like, everybody else looks up to. Oh, yeah. Nice. So what they'll do is, is they'll go in, they'll take, like, that 67 Slingerland drum set, right? Mm-hmm. And they'll put somewhere around 400 microphones on it. Uh, and if you ever see it, it's insane. It's almost like, how does the drummer even hit the head? Right. There's so many mics in the way. It is <laughs> ridiculous, right? But what they do is by capturing that, you can then go into the BFD. And correct me if I'm wrong, Jason. You can, like, change the dynamic of the drum. I mean, you can really get granular with it, right? Oh, you can tweak it in more ways than I've ever even tried or, yeah, like, you know, again, because I'm not going to use the finished product in the end, I don't really spend much time doing that. Sure. that. To me, that would just be a waste of time. But if I needed to do use that on a final production, the the yeah, possibilities that, are endless. Yeah. And what what's really making them realistic is they sample the drummer hitting that snare drum, let's say, in the center, mm-hmm. around the center, yeah. around the edge, and then at about... You know, I don't know how many velocity levels, but like this ridiculous number of velocities. Wow. So and then the program, when you program it in in a certain velocity range, it picks from, you know, I don't know how many choices yeah. of samples just in that velocity. So you never get this kind of unrealistic machine gunny awfulness yeah. that, you know, drum yeah. machines were known for. Right. They, It'll even like put a pop of a ring. So, oh, yeah. you know, if you crank the velocity up. It, you'll get that. It'll throw it in every 15th beat or something like that, just like a real drummer would do. Yeah. And wow. it's kind of scary, right? Yeah. Because it, it's, I mean, it is a recording of a real drummer, but it's been put into a MIDI file. And then, of course, you can manipulate that file. Yeah. I mean, but just to, to the, no end. Just the work it takes to get all that information in in the first place. Hundreds of hours, these guys will crazy. set this thing up. And like I said, they'll take. And I'm not exaggerating when I say they'll probably take about 30 microphones per drum. And what they're doing is, is they're giving you every dynamic range possible that you can get out of that, right? So it's capturing down to the wood sound mm-hmm. and, and, and everything, the top, the bottom, the sides of the thing. And then they're putting room mics out and it's, it's crazy. Wow. I'm and just sitting in front of my computer here, and I just pulled up the hard drive because you, you're supposed to put all the stuff on a dedicated hard drive, right? Because it, it's so large. Uh, yeah. In, yeah, it's just <laughs> and it's well, it's, it's just it has to. They tell you not to use it on your recording drive because the drive will just get bogged down, right? Mm-hmm. It can't access what it has to Quickly fast enough. enough. So yeah. Yeah. I have with my BFT core library and a few of the expansion packs I have. It's like just shy of 250 gigabytes. 
just their drum sounds. Holy crap. Wow. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty nuts. So. Wow. Yeah, yeah. So Superior Drummer and all those, they kind of all do their thing in light of what the BFD guys do. That's, yeah, that's and I think cool. from what I've heard, so I've never used Superior Drummer. I've used Easy Drummer, which is kind of like the light version of yeah, that. Yeah, but yeah. that's what Superior I Superior Drummer, I've heard, is an amazing product as well. I mean, it's it's there's so many great products out there now that are you know it's yeah. uh, there's no shortage of uh, of of great uh, products to use for music production now. That's for sure. Yeah, the only thing that we we always talk about though, Jason, is is that it's scary because there's so many of these uh, quote unquote bands where they're going in and there's a producer and the drummer isn't even, you know, he's not even playing. It's oh, just, I know. It's you terrible. know, they're, they're injecting <laughs> this and then they're selling it. Uh, Glenn Fricker, who's from up your way, uh, he, he's done complete videos on how he says the fans deserve better. Now he's a metal guy through and through, but he exposed some of the bands that are out there using uh, auto tune and time aligned drums and time aligned guitars and all that. And not to, you know, to make sure that everybody knows when you hear one of your recordings, it's a live cat on a live drum set. Right. Who's possibly the best drummer that's ever walked the face <laughs> of the earth. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, you know, what? and that's one of the things is I just can't bring myself to, to say, okay, what the heck, I'm just going to, you know, I could probably pump out twice the music I do if I was just saying, okay, I'll just do a, you know, a BFD track, I'll track everything, mm -hmm. yeah. and I'll release it. I mean, I can do I can do a tune a day, you know what I mean? But I'd rather, I'd rather wait six months for a guy like Marco to be available, get this done right, and then, you know, and, and I've had a lot of people contact me and say, I really appreciate the fact that you still do this because so many guys and i understand why people are doing it budget number one uh just logistics you know they can mm -hmm. pump out a, a pretty good product with a drum machine now and but so much of the stuff that you're hearing i find is that and i think you can still tell you know it's just sure it's missing that something right it's uh and, yeah. and that other thing that i've heard you guys talk about you know is that it's too perfect thing you yeah. know it's just like everything is perfectly time aligned and there's just nothing worse than that and i i really made an effort on this album to just cut things one or two takes like just nice you know just do it and not go back i mean if there was some glaring horrible you know thing that i just <laughs> blew really badly i go back and fix it but for the most part just you know do a couple takes of a solo and just leave it alone you know, and then live with it and then come back to it later. And, you know, and I think some, some really cool things happened on this album, you know, whereas maybe in the past, I kind of just navel gazed a little too much and just kept, you know, doing, but I would never do this whole timeline thing. I can't do oh. that. I just can't bring myself to do it. If I can't play the thing, I'm yeah. not going to re re release it. You know what I mean? It, it has yeah. to be able to be performed, right? And yeah. Otherwise, what's the point? It's, it, it, are we really making music anymore? You know, if I have to move every one of my guitar notes around after, it's just that seems insane to me. You know? But, yeah, yeah, it's but, that whole it's that whole balance that I that you know you're kind of like the catch twenty two, right? You have this device that you can use and you can make incredible recordings, but there's so many things that you can just go way overboard. Oh, for sure. And and then actually just you're not only cheating the, the listeners, you're cheating yourself because it's like, well, I, I can't do that one live, <laughs> you know, because I, mean, I can't even play it. You know, there's <laughs> absolutely now now you can make things overly perfect with the time and everything oh, before God, that. Yeah. yeah, I mean, everything now. But before that, it, it you know, the thing was everything was overproduced, mm -hmm. you know, and yeah. it just it it's it was just everybody was making things bigger and bigger and more and more just because they could, because the technology was so good that you could do that. You know, oh. you wouldn't lose quality and they just kept making it bigger and bigger. And it's like, it, it, it yeah. just, it, it, a lot of times it loses the core. Absolutely. Of what it really is. Well, it's like Metallica, right? They would go in and record guitar parts like six, seven, eight times. And it would all be Hetfield, mm -hmm. right? Because uh, Hammett wasn't even allowed to do rhythm tracks. I mean, that's how tight they ran that ship. And it, it really suffered because if you listen to uh, the Injustice for All album, there's no bass. 
Really? And they've gotten a yeah, lot of... Right. It's yeah, very they, base, uh, lacking in base for sure, yeah. It, it is completely gone, really. It's not yeah. even there. They, he t- he put so many guitar layers over top of it, the bass just disappeared. Wow. And then, I guess it was a budget constraint. They had to release the album because they weren't big then. They weren't mm-hmm. as big as they are now, right? So they actually are talking about like re-releasing that album and just bringing the bass it, yeah. tracks up so they can be heard. Yeah. But it's yeah. like... Well, they don't sound that huge when you hear them live because there's only two guys, not (laughs) eight guys. Right, right. And it gets a little, I don't understand that, you know? I mean, uh, if you listen to a band like Tool, they do it one take, Mm -hmm. you know? That's right. And the guitars are giant. And it's like, how do they do that? Well, it's, you know, that's when your producer, you know, your your, that guy has to You should be able to go out and, and give the audience a reasonable reproduction of what you recorded. You oh, know, I, I and, think, and hopefully uh, yeah. with with the members of the band, maybe one to augment yeah. something here and there. Oh, yeah. But you shouldn't have to put like eight more players on the stage, you know, to get it close. And if they're not there, uh, everybody's going, "Well, this isn't the same band that recorded it," <laughs> you know? Yeah, it's, yeah. yeah. It's, I I I agree, and I'm glad that you did what you do, man, because yeah, man. that that is that that's the way it should be done. Well, I think I think you can hear it in the end. You know, I hope you can hear oh, it in yeah. the end that it's it's actually performed and not you know uh, time aligned and auto-tuned and, and whatnot you know it's like uh, I, to me if like i said if something oh they hit that note of tune well just play it again you know until until you can play it properly right but well, it, it's you know, like for instance you know talking about this whole time aligned thing cue base you know which we were we were discussing and what i use there's a feature now in it i think it's been there for maybe since cue base seven or uh, don't quote me on that. It's, it's it's a fairly new in the last year or so. But you can take, say, say somebody multi-tracks 16 tracks of, of drum, you know, 16 microphones and whatnot. You can throw these into Cubase. You can throw them all into a folder track, which they call it. You then hit a button, which which makes any editing that you do apply to all 16 of the microphones or the tracks. Then... Uh, you do this thing called automatic hit point detection, which takes about two seconds or 10 seconds, depending on how long your files are. And it finds the start of every kick and snare hit, let's say. And then you assign those as the most important drums. And then because it knows where each hit is, you can hit quantize. And within 10 seconds, it quantizes the entire drum part to perfect grid. Oh my God. So honestly, like if somebody sent you this ridiculously out of time drum part within probably a minute and a half and hitting like three or four keystrokes, you can make this. And it's, it's rather transparent in the sound of it. Wow. So, you know, there, there, which is okay. I guess it's a nice feature, but you know, it's so easy to do this stuff now yeah. that it's, uh, I, well, I'll, I'll give you an example. On my last album, I, I, I did, when Marco tracked it, not this album that I just did, sorry, the, the one previous to it, Tales. Um, when Marco tracked it, I, I got in touch with him, and there's a product we have, him and I have available, which is a drum transcription of the entire album of his drum parts. And also it comes with uh, a mix of the album with no drums, so drummers can play along with it as well if they so desire. <laughs> wow. So I transcribed the drum part for this. Dare one and try. It, <laughs> Yeah, what's that, sorry? I said, dare one try. Yeah. Well, this is it, right? But it, uh, hopefully it's a bit of a learning tool. But I, I did the drum transcription to it, and I had never really transcribed drums. So I was sitting there racking my brains going, how in the world am I going to do this, right, first of all? So what I did is I took Marco's drums, and I did that to them. Because, I mean, obviously he's not sending a grid perfect. He's sending a, you know, a drum performance with Mm -hmm. amazing human imperfections in them right you know the way the way it should be so but that makes it very difficult to transcribe so i had them and i quantized them right to the beads and then i had the program actually turn those hit points into midi notes for me so what that did is it gave me a midi outline of his whole drum part which then cubase can print out a score to Mm. okay and then I had to go through and just kind of add the embellishments and, and, and certain little fixes. So it made the job a lot easier. So there's one area where that tool 
could be really, really cool. But the really funny story about it is when I was doing it, I sent Marco what I did. So I said, here's your drum track. And I panned it fully left in mono. And I said, here's the drum machine part I created from it. So I basically reproduced his entire drum part as a drum machine part by painting the notes in. Mm -hmm. And I panned them left and right to hear if they were right on. It was really neat. But anyways, I sent it to him and he goes, what... He says, you obviously quantize, like he could hear right away that his drum part was quantized and it probably drove him out of his mind, right? Because, <laughs> wow, you know, he didn't play it like that, right? right? Yeah. But anyways, he knew right away. He says, did you quantize that? And I said, well, I had to. And then I explained to him why. I said, well, I had to quantize it. Not for the album. Listen, like mm -hmm. that, obviously yeah. the album's not, this was just done strictly for the transcription, right? Right, right. for the <laughs> exercise. I yeah. sent him that file and he right away is like. You know, basically, he realized, hey, wait, you sucked all the life out of my drum part, right? I, so. was, I, was, I was just going to say, did you ever have the opportunity to play the quantized part, with, you know, within the music and listen to it as compared to the the original recorded part, you know? Yeah. And I'm just you wondering. You know what? I never did that, and that would be interesting yeah, because like, wow, you'd probably find it unlistenable. Yeah. I'm, think, I'm yeah. thinking anyways, but, so, you know. So when you do this, you don't, do, you don't use a click, right? For what? Sorry, for, uh, for for his for when he's recording his parts, is he using a click or or is he it... does? Yeah, because I okay. do my all, all mine to a click. I mean, really, in this day and age, when you're when you're working, so, you yeah, know, at distance like that, yeah. studio to studio, you're pretty much painted into the corner of using a click now, right? Because, mm -hmm. but that's that's the brilliance of a guy like working with a guy like Marco is that he he can take that click but play around it so right nice so well in a way that really brings you know breathes life into the music right he's not just going to go there and go oh well i've got to hit perfectly on each you know he's going to play it like a drummer just using that as a reference uh, mm -hmm. as a reference right yeah. and, and locking in with and, and and again what i'm playing my parts to a click but again i'm not time aligning my stuff so they're not i'm going to have those same hopefully good human imperfections in my parts that he's going to be able to play off of right so yeah. in the end because we're not time aligning everything i think it can almost give a feel like you know it's it's more of a live band feel even yeah, though this was done together. across many miles right yeah that is very cool that is cool that, do you ever get a chance to take any of this stuff out live um you know what i i've done live shows with it uh lately i haven't i am going to be going to uh nam this year with the godin guys and i'm going to be doing a performance out there so that'll be fun oh, cool. um so i've been uh, sort of woodshedding some of the tunes off the album and uh, but i would like to i, I you know like I, I think you guys know i relocated recently and uh, where we've moved to there's probably going to be a lot more opportunity for live playing so i'm going to be looking into oh, that nice. we're just sort of getting settled now in here so we'll probably be looking into that in the future yeah very cool very cool man and they just got to find other people to perform it with <laughs> well this is the other issue right is, again you hand you hand a drummer marco's yeah. track you, 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 uh, you suck you suck so what you, you do suck. here's You're not marco nobody's marco here's what you do <laughs> yeah you, you get with the aristocrat guys and you just come up with the whole thing where you open up there you go those two stay on stage. Guthrie is playing guitar out in the street with some hobo. And then afterwards, you guys just switch. And right. there you go. Uh, you got you got your, your dual show there. Everybody heard more notes than they could ever imagine. And then, uh, you know, That's go on your merry way. That'd be a hell of a That's show. That's a cool idea. I, like I that. think I, I would, got something going. I would going only here. agree to that if I was absolutely certain I would go on before Guthrie and not after <laughs> Guthrie, because that would be yeah. terrifying. But. Yeah, that's uh, yeah, that's somebody you don't want to follow, you know. No, you know. No. Wow. Uh, yeah, you know, I, <laughs> I would be pretty cool. you know, he has a he uses Charvels. Guthrie. Uh, Guthrie, right, does, yeah. right. And he was describing the guitar. Well, I often ask cuz he used to use John Sir guitars or Sir guitars. Okay. And I used to go, oh, this guy's got to go through frets like mm -hmm. like nobody, right? So then he starts telling about how the guitar and because he does so many shows and he's, you know, traveling all over, it's like uh the neck is roasted maple, only mm -hmm. maple, no mm -hmm. and no softer woods or anything. Uh what what else uh he uses locking tuners but not the locking nut. He uses the old style Floyds without the fine tuners on it. 
stainless okay. steel frets mm -hmm. and then the pickups are some crazy combination because of the stainless steel frets so when he plays his guitar and like in the neck position it sounds like a jazz box you know so he, he but you can just tell it must be thousands uh, upon thousands of hours yeah that this guy just lives with this instrument in his hand and then of course uh he just abuses it beyond belief yeah, just, just it, it, you know, obviously, he's probably one of the more demanding players uh, yeah. uh, on the instrument. And, you know, the rigors of the road, night after night after night. Oh, yeah. You know, it probably got to the point where he, he would, you know, the guitar would be good for a week and then he'd have to pick up a different one or something. Who knows? It's sort of like Steve Morris when he said, it's had uh, 10 sets of frets. <laughs> Yeah, right. <laughs> is there any fretboard left? You know? It's like, is there a slot? <laughs> right, right. I, I do like steel, stainless steel frets, though. The, the guitars I was using before the Godin's actually had stainless steel frets on, on uh, one of them, two of them, I think. Yeah, and uh, they are great. Love them, actually. When it comes time for any fret work to be done on these, which hopefully won't be anytime soon, but uh, I'll definitely look into to going the stainless steel route. They're, they're great. Wow. Do you, do you like them for the durability, or do you actually like that they're smooth, they're bending. smooth like glass? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I just like the fact that after, you know, using a guitar for a while, you don't start getting these little divots where, you know, you can't, you, you can't get your action nice and low anymore because no matter what you do, you're sinking in this little divot in the fret that, mm -hmm. you know, is touching the other frets in front of it and, and so on and so forth. So the durability is number one, but the smoothness is nice too. Yeah. I mean, it, they just stay so, so perfect for so long, right? It's, uh, they do. Yeah. That's yeah, nice. So. Yeah. Dean Farley just, he hates them. <laughs> he just fell off his chair. I know. <laughs> Why is that? Oh, so you know somebody who doesn't like him? Uh, oh, yeah. He's the guy at the beginning of the show that says stainless steel is the, work, work, of the oh, it's the work of the devil. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and when you do, when you have those done by by your luthier, you have to uh, pay extra. Pay extra for the. Because you're uh, paying for the tools. You got to buy a tool. Oh, That's big right. time, yeah. yeah. Big yeah. time, yeah. But I think it's worth it. I mean, in the end, you know, they're probably going to last you but uh, far longer anyway. So, yeah, they say you know, like you can know. get like a good 25 years out of them on Jesus. just being a an average everyday kind of player mm -hmm. you can they yeah. just go forever that right yeah, there I mean, the, the one that know. i had with them on i played lots and i mean it was like the day i got it there was there was no fretware on it whatsoever wow wow and i played that thing for probably four plus years of heavy heavy playing so yeah they, they just i could see that lasting you know like you said 20 25 years like nothing yeah my carving, you could put a pick in the slot in, in, in the in the fretware. You know, it's just like oh, and these things are in the frets. These things are cooked. Yeah, because you know, it just it happens. Yeah, true. Yeah, you know? true, 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 true. Wow. wow. So, uh, you were of course using those e stamps on the recording, or were you going Kemper? He's probably Kemper. Well, I would think I was using the Kemper for the ease of it, but you're kind of sort of here in the stamps, right? Oh, oh yeah, <laughs> uh, that's right. I did the profiles. Well, Jeff and I have have the website up there where you, actually people with the Kemper can uh, can purchase the the e stamp digital profiles. Nice. Um, I you know that whole Kemper thing. It's it's an interesting an interesting thing, and I know we kind of talked about it between us uh, back when when I first got it and I sent you those files. Mm -hmm. um, I you know. When I when I first started looking into the camper, the camper is only as good as the amp that was profiled and the skill of the person who did the profile. Mm. So the camper can be the most horrible, awful sounding <laughs> thing you've ever heard, or it can be this the most amazing thing you've ever heard. Now. What I did is I had this huge pedal board. I had all these Eventide uh, stomp boxes and some Strymon stuff. And I looked at it and I was like, this is, this is getting out of control. I'm not even using half of this stuff. So I ended up just selling the whole thing, which raised enough money to pick up a Kemper. Now, I, the way I looked at it, I was like, well, even if it's, you know, from the profiling thing, even if I don't use it for that, it's got a pile of killer effects in there. And, yeah. and the funny thing about it is people don't even 
talk about it as an effects processor, but it's an amazing, amazing effects processor. And they constantly keep releasing updates. Just last week, they put a new update out with like all these new delays available. So, and they don't charge anything for it. They just, they give it wow. to their, their users, right? So, nice. so the same, the same thing I, with the um, fractal, with the fractal, a lot of guys just use it for all the effects in there. Steve Vai. Yeah. I yeah. think Steve Vai does that. Right. Yeah. And right. I mean, these things are absolutely stellar effects processors. So I was going, well, what do I have to lose here? The worst case scenario is I got a really cool effects unit uh, with, you know, literally thousands of dollars worth of effects built into it. Mm -hmm. So then when I got it and I said, okay, I'm going to really set up and do some great profiles. So I took, you know, the club 18 and the studio Two, the East uh, studio Two and club 18 did the profiles the way that I would normally record, you know, my projects. And then I just did like, I always like to do with this stuff. I'm a big, uh, a uh, big believer in the blind A B tests, you know, like mm -hmm. really not knowing what you're hearing to come to the conclusion of, you know, the without the expectation bias part of it, right? Um, and I couldn't I, I I couldn't accurately guess what I was actually listening to. So at that point I was kind of going, Well, this is crazy to set up mics every single time I want to record a guitar track, you know, place it just perfect, right. dial the amp in and you, you know, if I can do that once and it's going to cover 80 to 90% of the tones I'm going to use on a regular basis. I might as well just do that. And mm -hmm. so once I did that, I mean, I, the, the, the camper is an amazing thing. I mean, it really, really is. And I never thought I'd be the guy sitting here telling you that I was that in love with a, a digital amp. But I mean, it, again, it's only as good as, you know, the tube yeah. amp that is being profiled. And it's only that one sound that you profiled, right? Yes, you can tweak it after the fact, but I mean, it's not going to be, um, very loyal to the sound of the amp, I think, once you start cranking the artificial gain on the on the profile. So mm. what I do is I profile my amp very, very clean, slightly broken up, slightly more broken up, overdriven, distorted, so I don't have to tweak the, the mm. settings. I can just foot switch between nice. these five channels I just created. Right. So That's what true. you're basically hearing is about as close a digital copy as you can possibly imagine to the amp that you're, you know, that that uh, you were playing. So I so in that case for recording. And again, it's back to that idea I was talking about with the acoustic guitar and the microphone in front of it. You know, if you got somebody running around, right. uh, you know, <laughs> ruining your recording. Well, OK, well, I got to guess take two. Right. Where but with it, there's this, a time where you I can throw can't make of, noise. Yeah, you know, and, yeah, yeah absolutely. absolutely. Throw a set of headphones on at 3.30 in the morning mm -hmm. and record a guitar solo with a really killer tone, you know. So, so I, I don't know. I'm really kind of up the middle on this. I'm not like, Oh, cool. Now I can just get rid of tube amps forever. You know, I don't think it does that. I think it's just yeah, too many guys are one or the other. Like, you know, they just, I'm all tube amps and I'll never use digital or I'm all digital and I'll never go back to tube amps. And it's like, I don't understand why it has to be like that. You know, it can right. be more, yeah. you can have the tube amp, you can have this. They're both great tools for different, you know, different times and different uh, circumstances. Right. Yeah. And when you go out live, you know, you can take your two tube amp mm -hmm. that's going to be reliable uh, yep. because I've had the pleasure of having digital equipment reboot in the middle of a <laughs> uh, of a performance. Absolutely. And uh, boy, that's a little, uh, you know, you, you tighten the sphincter a little bit as you're standing there in front yeah. of people going, I don't know what's going I on. I can't make noise for another 15 <laughs> seconds. Just hang yeah. on. Yeah. <laughs> Give it time. It's, it's right. The splash screen came up. So, yeah, absolutely. You, you know, you got that and. You know, it, you can then still take the device out and use it for the effects. And if the effects crap out, you know, if the thing would actually crash, but they make these very good now. Mm -hmm. um, they are made very well. That's true. They are. Yeah, but. You could bypass it, you know, if you had to, if and you had you'd to. still have your tube amp, right? Right. right. Um, yeah. Th those uh, those Germans, they kind of know what they're doing. <laughs> Yep. They have built a really solid product. I, I've never had it crash, never had any, any issue like that. But you're like, you're saying, you know, I, I say that now and then, you know, that it will actually happen in the worst Stop it. possible yeah. time. Right. <laughs> but, you know, so, but like you said, you take the amp boat, you, you throw that in the effects loop and boom, you got all your effects that you could ask for. Yeah. You still got your two. So, I mean, it's the best of both worlds as far as I'm concerned, but from a, from a strictly studio standpoint, it's just unbelievable. I mean, it, the thing is just killer. I just love the fact that you can capture the sound the way you want it rather than like with the fractal is more like, here's, here's our stuff. The tones. Yeah. Yeah. And this is supposed to be modeled after, uh, you know, 
uh, Bogner or whatever, you know, yeah. and, and then you got to go, yeah, I guess it's kind of like a Bogner, you know, but with, with this, I was able to take, you know, the East amps, do the profile and then literally a B the exact same. And the way I did it too is while I had it set up, what you can do is you can record the profile you just did and you can record the mic setup you had to do the profile with the exact same performance into Cubase. So when I was doing the blind Uh, AB, it wasn't two performances. I didn't want that because you know, the performance differences are going to be what you're hearing Mm -hmm. if, if, I wanted it to be identical. So I did the A blind AB test with identical performances. I think that's the ones I sent to you guys too. Yeah. Um, and it was like, if there was a difference, it was very, very tiny, you know? And the amazing thing about it too, is the way they have the profiles done. I mean, if you roll your volume control down, it cleans it, up, it totally cleans up. It's, it feels like a tube map, which is just crazy. But when you see the profiling process, it, it makes sense, right? They send all these test tones through, and the test tones start at such, well, basically an inaudible volume and, yeah. and work its way up. So it's trying to, I guess, capture all the, the nonlinearities of mm-hmm. yep. of the distortion, right? And it it's pretty amazing, man. What, whatever they've done with that, it's, it's, it's a pretty incredible uh, – deal changer i guess uh, you know deal deal breaker but then anyways it's that's uh cool. that's cool and i've heard i've heard too like you could take it and correct me if i'm wrong you could take it out live run your stage volume through the east right but if the sound man doesn't have good mics or he doesn't know what the hell he's doing you can run the profile out of the back of the Kemper to the PA the system okay. and then yep. still have what you're hearing on stage. So you're feeling that air move, right? right? right. Absolutely. They're getting yeah. the East profile out front, um, but you're getting mm-hmm. you're getting a, a, the way you wanted it mic'd, not yeah. what right, right, right. this guy that's you know back there doing coke in the middle of a uh, axe. <laughs> right, and, yes. <laughs> and, so they've even taken that a step further now. Um they have it so that you can profile a di- what they call a direct profile. So you can just take the preamp out really? and profile just the preamp. Holy crap. Right? So out of, out of your effects loop, let's say, mm-hmm. um, your effects send, you put that into the camper. And so what it does is now it's profiling just the preamp. The front end of the amp. Wow. wow. Just the front end. Yeah. So now what it does is it keeps that as separate. And you, you, you do the, I think they call it merging it. You merge it with the profile that was done with the microphone, right? So when you get on stage, I could send the, one, the, the profile with the microphone and speaker cap to the front of house. And I can take the, uh, just the front end of the amp, now plumb that into my effects return, and then trigger the power section of the amp on stage with just the preamp profile. So that's wild. I so, <laughs> take something like, you know, Jeff's club 18 amp and foot switch through five preamp, you know, profiled preamp channels, but still getting the power amp out of, out of the club 18. So, or you could take like a Marshall. I was just going to say, go into the yeah, effects loop and, and it have, would be the same, but it would be close. It would be very close. Yeah. yeah. So you'd have the club 18 going through a 412 Marshall cabinet yeah. Sounding like the Club 18 on stage, yeah, it's pretty, to, it's so pretty your cool. brain doesn't get rattled, yeah. and then out front <laughs> they're hearing just the Club 18. Right, right, right. Totally. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, it's no no sense in showing up anymore. <laughs> yeah. And then on top of it, you got all these effects at your foot. Yeah. Yeah. Foot. Uh, yeah. It's, cool. it's that uh, is... and really, like I said, really good. Even even some of the digital wah pedals they have in there are, are pretty amazing like i never thought i would say that either but you can actually get some really cool wah sounds out of it yeah it's pretty neat wow. well i'll have to uh <clears throat> once once we actually do get the new uh the new bubber wah up and running i'll have to send you one Shove oh, that are, thing you, are you doing one? Oh yeah yeah oh boy oh boy oh good <laughs> Yeah, it's yeah. it's pretty. It's the most like the like the new duality is the most versatile lamp I've done. The, the wah pedal is actually the most versatile pedal that I've done. It's got a couple of few cool switches on it. It's really cool. That is awesome. I had no idea you were doing that. That oh, is yeah, great. Yeah. Type. Well, uh, yeah, I'll look forward to that. I'm actually looking forward to the duality too. That's going to be a yes, exciting, exciting thing. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. His is on the uh, on the bench with everybody else's. So uh, look at that mid build yeah. right now. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Yep. Awesome. Yeah. Well, cool. I tell you what, man. Um, you know, I uh, love watching the videos every week. 
<laughs> as so do our listeners. Totally. And uh, I don't know how you keep doing it, but thank well, you. Whenever <laughs> I want a good smack in the face, I'll just pull just one of those like, videos on again. <laughs> yeah, what? Oh, God. I mean, it, it, what does that library in your head look like? I have no idea. Um, it's actually, you guys didn't notice, it's just all the same lick at different speeds. <laughs> <laughs> you guys didn't notice that yet? I've done 81 of them. Like, there, there you go. go. <laughs> That's perfect. <laughs> That's perfect. It's like ACDC, the same album how many times? Exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Just speed it up and slow it down. Yeah. Yeah. I like I like perfect. I love the ones where he's like, you know, it's like blazing speed and then this, this beautiful clean <laughs> chime. And then it plays. There always has to be some nice jazzy steely dan chord oh, after those, so you cool. know. <laughs> Absolutely. And then he takes two notes that just they're like I don't even know how you do well, I you you got this the, thing. The, but the dissonance. The, the the two notes that never go together. And you put them together and I go, How the hell does he know how that works? I mean it oh, works. Yeah, I'm I'm kinda into the dissonant thing a lot oh, there. I like God, that. It's so crazy. Yeah. Yeah, I love it. I love it. <laughs> I hear it and I go. Well, uh, he's the only guy I know could do that. <laughs> I think if, if you do it like you mean it, then people kind of just go, oh, it sounds bad, but okay. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I don't it's know. like this 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 pregnant pause. Like, uh, yeah, just this. What? <laughs> and then it's just crazy right contrast, so but it, you yeah. go, well, that's the only thing that fits there. Totally, yeah. You know, that's the part that always gets me. I'm like, well, I, oh, oh, he made it work. Well, I don't know how that, they it, does that. It's not that it, the only thing that fits there. It's once you hear it there, you wouldn't be satisfied with anything else in its place. Yeah. Yeah. Right. It's like, oh, that's perfect. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, uh, you know, <laughs> too funny. And your video editing is absolutely impeccable, man. I mean, the the, oh. the intro with the letters falling down now and, and, and all the backing track <laughs> yeah, I stuff. I think you got and, some new, new video stuff too. And, and then the tablature comes up. I'm telling you, anybody listening to this, if you don't take advantage of that, you're, you're, you're stupid because it's free. <laughs> Right. It doesn't cost a yeah. dime. <laughs> yeah, it's very yeah. cool. It's very yeah, I got this new video editing software. I'm still kind of learning how to use it. Even in the new place here, I, I had to really kind of – I'm still working on getting the lighting down. I was actually, I just shot a whole new full-length uh, song video today. Actually, I've just been editing it, uh, one of the new new tracks off the new album. So I've been just kind of working on getting the lighting right in this new space and everything. But I think I got it uh, coming along better. But, uh, cool, yeah, it's fun. It's uh, Video is not my thing by any stretch, but I'm always looking to – you know, slightly improve it, and uh, seems to be the the thing to do now is videos, right? Oh, for sure, absolutely, man. Yeah. Well, just keep uh, <laughs> keep doing what you do, because uh, you know, the more you do it, the better you get at it. You yeah, know? man. I, I'm not saying <laughs> about the playing because that's you know, you can't. Yeah, I don't know. You can't really go any further for there. Just you know, for the video thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, you can always go further with the playing. I always sometimes I sit there and go, well, oh, got to be more here, but I don't know. Well, figure it out as they go along. Yeah. Well, yeah. you know, you can well. you can start adding strings or taking strings off. And, you know, just <laughs> who knows? Who knows? And you know, you know what? Okay, so there's the thing. If you give me a seven string guitar, mm -hmm. all of a sudden I feel like I I've never played this instrument before. It's the weirdest thing. <sighs> yeah, those I, things I, are weird. I've I, never picked know, one up. I've never picked one up. I, I really I'd like to. But I I had a chance to play one, you know, and that B string, that low B. Mm -hmm. It throws you off, doesn't it, it? Yeah, and it just felt like I now I'm obligated, like I right. had to play it, uh -huh. right? So you got this B drone going on all the time, and, and it was like, well, you know, what else do you do with it? It's it's it, it has to be weird because a lot of times, you know, for for bars and things, I'm I'm you yeah. know, I'm, I'm oh, doing yeah, the no, thumb thing. Yeah, you're you know? not doing that anymore. Yeah, no. that's Ooh. like what? No, do no, I do no. With my thumb now. Now here's the thing: <laughs> I have seen jazz guys that run bass lines like monsters on seven strings oh i bet well they always used to run bass lines but now it's yeah, like now, now they it's, can get more bass notes. yeah and it's very convenient yeah right absolutely um the metal guys they're just like well let's put it down as low as we can so chug, it chug, still chug, rings chug, chug. Right. and uh we'll make this tone at nam that everybody wants to uh lose their mind from mm -hmm. yeah that's <laughs> the old uh, gent the is that what it's called the gent thing is that something? uh yes yes you are yeah, right. that's the... <laughs> yeah that's correct we had those guys across from us at the last nam uh, uh in the winter nam Oh yeah. yeah, we heard nothing but a guitar just go woof, 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 for eight yeah. hours a day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was this. It's not, this, it's not my cup of tea, but I mean, I guess it's uh, yeah. Well, after a was, while, was though, this, you know, this rumble and buzz. Yeah, and yeah, like yeah. 
I see he's playing a guitar, but I don't really have any I do guitar see a notes. mid-range knob, <laughs> but I don't know if it's on. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> well, Are you guys doing that? Are you guys heading out to NAM this year? I, I'm still up in the air about it. I'm still yeah. up in the air. So we'll see. Last time I went, I almost died because of the uh, na- the pneumonia that I got. Oh God! Oh, the nam the nam tracks. Yes, <laughs> that's right. Yeah, I'm a little scared of that place. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it. yeah it's uh, it's pretty much inevitable. You know, you know, coming home, you're going to be out of commission for about a week and a half. And... <laughs> yeah, that was a, like, I was like, man, that was an awesome time. I got back and I was like, I'm going to die. I'm gonna... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you you get well just in time. Like if you're a big enough company, you get well just in time to go to Music Mess. You know? <laughs> do it all over yeah, again and go get some uh, foreign jerks. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, well, uh, we uh, I, I I think we've covered just about everything. Unless there's something that you want to plug. The name of the new release is the new release is called the Learning Curve. The Learning Curve. And it's a 10-track album available on CD and various uh, digital formats in all the typical places. Uh, CD Baby, Bandcamp, iTunes, uh, awesome. Google Play, yada, 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 all the, uh, all the popular ways to consume music. Of course. And I also have, uh, you know, my website, www.saditis.com. And, uh, you know, all the social media stuff, Instagram, uh Jason Sedaitis on Instagram. My YouTube channel, anybody who's interested in following all the stuff I'm doing on there can subscribe there. And Facebook and Twitter and yada, yada, yada. You know, the typical stuff. Mm-hmm. So here's the no thing deal. on our links page. Yeah. At Jason's uh, site is there. So you can yes. click on that. Um, I'll put it on the episode, which it'll live in. Perpetuity. That's right. Mm-hmm. Um, but absolutely go to his stuff and you can get to all of that stuff on your website correct everything that Absolutely. you would, yeah. yeah so i have just, a i have a download store right to the website too you can order directly oh, well there you there. go and, yeah yeah nice and and you will get to hear the uh the track that marco couldn't do and then 18 minutes later was done <laughs> <laughs> and in fact that is track 10 on the new album just in case anybody's curious so there you go that'll that'll make people rushing by now there you go. now if, your <laughs> if we pause uh-huh. just for a second you can hear jason play <laughs> there you go. Because every episode has Jason underneath of us uh, in the bed. Yeah, the bed I, I lay it down. I I've had uh, I've I brought it up, and then sometimes I, I it's a little because of the way that you know when you finish it, it's mm-hmm. like wow that got louder. So I try to keep it to where it's just underneath. So if if you stop, if we stop, you you'll hear it. There you go. There you go. Perfect. Some people might say I've never sounded better that quiet. <laughs> <laughs> See whether everybody knows it or not. They've heard Jason. Yeah, yeah that's right. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You Your don't know subconscious it, you... has played that album, uh, right. a couple it's... albums, uh, many times. Right. It's a song. It's that our sublim- hear... subliminal master plan to take over the world. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's the song you hear when you fall asleep and you don't know where it came from. <laughs> and just as a real, and quick, you wish it would go away. That's right. <laughs> just as a real quick thing, uh, sometimes when I'm mixing it, right, if I don't do the volume pre i it comes in at you know oh yeah, yeah. full volume mm-hmm. right and i'm it scares the hell out of me because <laughs> I, I i'm not used to hearing that thing at full volume mm-hmm. and i'm hearing our voices and all of a sudden this thing explodes like a cannon so uh yeah i've heard the album many a time <laughs> <laughs> very good or at least the first few notes oh yeah well yeah. no yeah. i get the whole oh, thing the whole every thing. now and then yeah, yeah. Oh, cool cool all right jason thank you so much yeah, man. man. thanks for taking the time uh, uh listeners go go pick up his stuff uh it's it's great you know fantastic players oh. on, on all the stuff yeah take advantage of it you know look at the the uh uh quick lick and tabs and everything and you know, be as intimidated or more so than I am, or no less so than I am, because I'm <laughs> the most intimidated of all. And um, you. <laughs> you know, and and if um, you know, let us know if you uh, if you know you get settled in and you finally get a chance to start taking some of this stuff out, because we'll make mention of it. And if anybody is in the sure. uh, the Great White North and uh, can can find you in a in a venue of their choosing somewhere, that would be awesome. Yeah, buy that That's album. Great. Jason's got new house payments. They're absolute. That's right. That's, that's right. Yes, yes. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> yeah. Well, thanks so much for having me, guys. I really, really appreciate it. And it's always uh, always a blast uh, chatting with you guys. And keep up great uh, work on the show. I always enjoy listening. Well, right back at you, man. Keep up the great work yourself. Yeah, and man, always a thank pleasure. You.
Always a pleasure. All right, guys. All right, take care. See ya. And there you have the story again. Love that guy. Yeah, yeah. A lot of fun. You know? A lot of fun. We, we don't... We don't get to talk to him that often. Obviously, there's a hundred and some odd episodes in between this. But uh, you know True. what? Uh, just you can just hear it in his voice. He is just you know, he's doing what he loves. And that's that's what yeah, matters. He's a man. happy camper, man. He's a happy and he's camper. just an amazing musician. I'm telling you, man, pick up all of his stuff. Yeah, it it's it's one of those things. There's certain people, you know, mm-hmm. and there's like a handful of them. Isn't that weird? Like if if they're that good. You know him, mm-hmm. and and uh, I know somebody's going to say, well, "I know this guy, man, lives down the street." No, I understand. <laughs> there, there's millions of these guys, but the ones that you know, know uh, that are out there doing it. Uh, they, there's like a small club of those guys. Jason's one of those guys. I know he talked about Guthrie, but that cat has got mm-hmm. a lot of chops, man. And he, I, just, I think that'd be a great show that you suggested hell yeah you know i don't know why they you know marco just, him, really him, needs him, to make that happen or something i, yeah, I him it, opening up with with the, the rhythm section oh from, uh, from guthrie govan and and then just, could you imagine that would be an awesome I'd, I'd pay money to see that hell yeah i'd pay twice to see that uh, yeah I'd support both of them let me tell you you come out of there you'd be like well i'm just gonna go home and mm-hmm. it's now i'm gonna hang it on the wall <laughs> that's right it's <laughs> all right it's just turned into wall art <laughs> there you go yeah man so until next time, my friend. Of course. Yeah, we got awesome guests. That's right. I'm Mick Marcelino. And I'm still Jeff Bober. That's right. And we're always saying. Onward. Be sure and follow the show on Twitter at Amson Axis. Also, make sure you like the show on Facebook for news, comments, and everything else, visit the webpage, ampsandaxiscast.com. Thanks for listening. Mm-hmm.